Hey there, it's Pete, GCI Turf, Greensboro, North Carolina. And what we're working on today is annuals, summer annuals. So we got some Penta, Angelonia, Coleus in here. I'm gonna kind of show you how we go about doing this. I know you rolled up to the hotel on vacation some really nice bank or whatever and see these gorgeous flowers and you've always wondered how in the heck do they do that well I'm gonna show you how we do it and uh, for our clients and I'm actually here at my house doing them so uh, hope this will help commercial guys that want to uh, learn how to plant them maybe plant them a little faster so you can be more efficient and uh, uh, definitely how to get them to grow and homeowner you'll be able to achieve that look uh, like some of those real high-end properties you see well first I'm a fan this is a bed I'm gonna be working on it's at the front house I've chosen uh, dragon wing begonias and coleus as my two flowers here uh, of course summertime flowers there are man the sky's the limit you can get whatever you want whatever color you want it's just tons of them uh, wintertime Basically pansies and viola. Uh, there are some other options, but summertime definitely lots of choices. Uh, I'm a fan of no-till flower beds. That's an agricultural appro approach, and what that means is you don't come in and rototill the ground and get the ground loose. I leave it as is, as it was through the winter. The reason I do that, <coughs> let's see if I can get lucky right here and find some. I may have to go a little deeper, but if you keep going, they're loaded with bait worms. They're a little deep right now because we've had incredible amounts of rain. So it's kind of flushed them down a little bit. But the whole point is to not disturb the biology in the ground, earthworms, whatever it would be. Earthworms, earthworms are some of the best fertilizer producers on the earth. So why in the world would I, would I want to stick a tiller in there and kill them? So I leave the uh, bed as is from the winter. Uh, we will freshen up the dirt and the soil. This is uh, Pete's compost manure. It's from here in North Carolina. Uh, it's all organic. It's a cow compost. And then... I've also got their uh, sandy loam uh, mix that's got a little cow compost in it as well. So what I do first is I'm going to put out my cow compost. So once I get my compost out, I'm going to rake it out uh, roughly an inch deep, being real careful to keep it in the actual bed itself. I don't want to waste any of this stuff. I want it all to go exactly where it's supposed to go. So this is going to give me some loose, loose soil to work with when I'm planting. Of course the ground up under there, the no-till part, it's not seriously compacted because it's had tons and tons of topsoil and compost put in it over the years. And then I'm going to go out with my sandy loam. The reason I like this, you can see the sand mixed all in there. It's exceptional for drainage. It makes a, a real good drainage product because you know that the majority of annuals, flowers, whether it be pansies or summer flowers or whatever, they require water, but they don't like to be saturated in water. They don't like wet feet. 
So you want you want a bit of water them, but you also want the, the ground to drain out real good. You don't want standing water there. So I'm gonna get this nice and smooth. I'm kind of a stickler on some of the stuff, so I'm gonna turn this landscape rake around. I'm gonna flatten it out real nice. Like so. Pull it this way. This way I got a nice smooth surface to work with. This is one of the tricks that planting really fast. It's basically a, it's just a cheap Black & Decker drill. Uh, get it from Lowe's for like 60 bucks maybe. An auger. I uh, have no idea where I got this one. Um, but you can get them at Lowe's or gardening shops or wherever. And so what I'm going to do is start on the edge and start putting my holes in. Going right around the outside edge leaving about uh, maybe about a foot because you got to remember these are summer annuals and they're going to get big so you, you want to leave them room to grow you don't want to crowd them out that's a huge thing i see a lot of flowers that are just planted too close especially summer flowers uh, these dragon wings i'm planting them about 10 maybe 12 inches apart that's going to give them plenty of room to fill out and grow So you can see my basic outline here and that to me that's one of the most important parts is getting the outside edge nice and even and the flower separated good because um, unless you're walking right over top of it um, well from a distance it's going to make the outside edge look a lot fuller now the middle flowers of course i'll plant those the same distance apart and then See if I got two holes here, I'm trying to go in the middle of this one on the next run, like that. And I'll come in here, like so, fill in these little gaps, just like that. So there is my uh, bed ready for flowers, or close to it, I've got to feed them. I use a 100% organic fertilizer it's a hundred percent slow release and uh, I do my fertilizing on my flowers a little different uh, than some or you know some of you guys may do it this way I'm not sure but I fertilize very very heavily um, simply because I don't want to have to come back and feed them and uh, it's called spoon feeding uh, when you feed periodically, uh, so like a golf course termination, terminology, excuse me. So I'm going to put, that's about a, uh, what's that's about four pounds of actual fertilizer that's going in this, this is probably about a 50 square foot area. So you can see how heavy I've got it there. So for the most part, if you're planting in a uh, circular, oval, uh, whatever shape that doesn't have some type of a hard surface on the back or some type of backdrop, uh, you, and you're using two different plants, you want to put the, the plant that's going to get the, the biggest in the middle and then plant the smaller stuff around it. So in this case, I've got coleus. Now I'm going to load up the middle here with, with the coleus and go all around the outside with the uh, with the dragon wings. Because typically the coleus is going to get quite a bit bigger than the dragon wings. And so you don't want the uh, if you had the coleus on the outside, of course it would tower over the uh, 
the begonias and heck it may even choke them out. So we definitely don't want to do that. But I'll go cull this all in the middle here. Like so. Like so. Alright, I think that's all. I think I got one more over there. Always remove the tag. That is a major pet peeve of mine. I cannot stand the tag left in the bed. So we'll throw that over there. Yep, that looks good. Now, vice versa, if, if you have a backdrop, uh, I'll show you some beds uh, in a minute like that. You want the taller stuff in the back. That way it kind of gives you a, uh, uh, kind of like a, a, a upward um, slope, you know, the, the shorter stuff in the front and the taller stuff in the back. Here's the way I like to do mine as far as getting them fast. Now, if you got small hands, you're not going to be able to do this. But when I pull them out, I like to pull them out and hold all three. And then I'll give it a little squeeze, and it comes right out. A little squeeze, comes right out. Squeeze, comes right out. These are 1801 flats. Uh, most nurseries have an 1801 size, and then they also have a 3601 size. Uh, the, and the first number just tells you how many flowers are in the flat. And that says there's, there's 18 in this one. Of course, the 36s, you can get those as well, but they're much smaller. And I like, I like planting some of this bigger stuff uh, just from the start. See me just throwing them here and plopping them in the hole. I assure you, if you got a good nursery uh, like A and A plants that we use in uh, Brown Summit, who grows a very, very quality, high quality uh, annual, you can just throw them out there. You're not going to hurt a thing. You're not going to break them or damage them. Now you do need to be a little more cautious with uh, things like coleus because they are a little more fragile. Uh, than, than most of the summer stuff. Alright, so I got them all in the hole. Now, the way I like the plants, of course, I get down on all fours and I'll grab the root ball kind of like this. Sometimes I may grab it like that. But I'll squeeze just a little bit, not hard. And I actually use the root ball to help me dig a little hole. And or to open up the hole that's already been dug. And what I want to do is leave this this part of the plant, the top of the root ball, even with the dirt. Kind of like that. I don't I don't want dirt pushed up on the stem of the plant because that can cause some disease issues or rot issues in the future so I want that that root ball nice and even with the top of the dirt so when you want to get some speed to it you just start grabbing them and like so Once I get several of them stood up in a, in a spot, like that, I'm going to take my hand and use it kind of like a little bulldozer. Just kind of go back around and rake that loose dirt all around the base of the annual. And what that's doing is that's mixing that fertilizer that we just put down. It's getting it mixed and incorporated into the, the dirt really well. And it's also going to give these plants a, a very good fast start 
because the root system doesn't have to work so hard and dig through hard dirt. It's all nice and loose, airy soil. Don't worry if some of them don't stand up perfectly straight. That's completely fine. Once they take root and start growing good, believe me, they're gonna stand up. big bed and you get several of them in the ground like that and you start working with two hands and really make some time. I'm a huge stickler for systems doing things uh, my wife says I'm OCD about doing things the exact same way every single time regardless of the situation for me, it, just, it works well like that, especially when it comes to planting flowers. We use the same system for wintertime, summertime, and it just works well. All of our employees know the system good, and we get through it for guys, and it's all gelling together nicely. Well, you can knock flowers out in a hurry. Top dressing on it lays nice and neat and pretty. I'm flatten out all the edges, even on the front side. So the next thing. Is uh, that is pretty much it. Got to do that. I use these little hand spreaders uh, for pre emergent pendulum, snapshot. There's several of them out there. I go especially around the edges because you're going to get some weeds come up. I don't like pulling weeds, so definitely don't like spraying Roundup anywhere near my flowers. So I'm going to give it a good dose of pre-emergent right on top of the dirt. Just like that. A little extra around the edges. And the last step. I'm going to take this soil conditioner in a bucket. Now, a lot of folks use mini nuggets, pine bark mini nuggets for this. And I'm not a fan of that simply because when you go to change out the annuals in the winter, you have to clean all those nuggets up. That's just more work. But you can see this is a real fine type mini nugget 
It's actually a soil conditioner. So when we change out our annuals, we just leave the soil conditioner there. And uh, it just helps to make the soil better over time. Shaking this out, little bucket. Now I'm going to go quite a bit heavier around the edges because in a, in a month you're not going to see anything in the middle here. This will be one big mass of flour. And the edges, of course, you'll still see that uh, where it butts up against pine needles or mulch. Being very, very cautious to just barely get it. Barely get it on the mulch. I like nice, clean, defined lines in my landscape. My edging, and that's even on where the flowers are at. So you can see right here. I'm just barely putting it right there on the edge, giving me a good, clean edge there. Prior to doing this, I took a shovel and kind of re-edged out my uh, the grass line. That way I have a nice clean place for this condition to fall. When I'm shaking it over the, the, the bulk of the uh, bed or in the middle, I don't go nowhere near as heavy, simply because it doesn't need that much. Because, like I said, it won't be long. These flowers are going to be really big. And they're going to be nice and full. So I really don't need it that heavy on the inside. You can see how I've got this edge cleaned out good with a shovel. Alright. A little bit more. Once I get this done, I'll go back and you have to be very gentle with this. But I'll take and just kind of tap those, tap that conditioner off. Don't worry, you're not going to get every single last piece off. That's okay. When it rains or when you water, the rest of it will come off. There's no problem. And of course, the last thing, you can do this with a blower, a broom. Of course, I like it nice and clean and neat. So I'm going to take your broom. I'm going to sweep it right up to the edge. Just like that. Gives me a nice, clean edge. Then when I mow and blow off my sidewalk, I'm going to be extra careful right here. Not to blow all this off of the edging, like so. So that's kind of the way we do our flowers. And so. Once you get your flowers in the ground, get them fertilized, get the compost on them, there's one thing left to do. It is the single most important thing that you do to the flowers. And that is this magical liquid right here called water. Of course, this goes uh, with any tree, plant, bush, shrub, Anything you plant in the ground, it's got to have water to get going. Uh, some require more, some require less. It's very important for these summer flowers <coughs> to get 
a lot of water really quickly to get them rooted in good so that they're ready for the summertime. I typically run mine about three hours at a time and I'll do that about every third day. So uh, that'll give you some kind of idea. I would say if you're hand watering, uh, I'd say they need about an hour a week at least, if uh, not a little bit more. And of course, uh, some folks have an irrigation system and have little micro misters like I have here, and you can set your timer. And uh, main thing is to keep the ground wet, moist. A uh, good way to check it is to simply stick your finger in it. If they look dry, stick your finger in there and fill the soil and. Uh, See if it is dry. If it is, give them a drink of water. I uh, hope this helps. If you're a client of ours and we plant your flowers, of course, we water them in at the time of installation. And uh, we'll come around about every other month during the summer and give them a little watering and, and feed them. But other than that, the client is responsible uh, to keep the, keep the flowers watered and uh hope this helps uh get there and create your flower bed and uh give, give your property a little color check you later